This is Planet Zoo music playing currently for anyone, uh, for anyone curious, I've been using a lot of its music in the Minecraft series that I've been doing on the channel. I am tired. I am very quite decently, uh, decently tired. I was not planning on, uh, staying up super late last night. I need to add a display capture thing where Bob is why I need to do hello, hello, CJ and Reggie Bump. I guess we'll, I guess we'll see here, essentially. Um, should I just change, like, the properties of this over? Yeah, sure, I can do that. I can go ahead and do that. So, last night, I, uh, I was like, okay, let's just do, like, a short stream of, uh, Fire Emblem Three Hopes. It'll just be, like, a short thing just to get done, like, the story chapter, and then, like, set up, like, a next new chapter that has, like, a whole bunch of side battles that I can do at the upcoming Fragapalooza that's going on this weekend. Gonna be August 4th to 7th. And, well, it seems like it was just a bunch of, like, story chapter after story chapter without any of those, like, smaller battles anymore. So, it kind of got carried away and kind of wound up being up until, like, 2.30 last night doing that. And was thinking about just, like, seeing it through. But, uh, you know, eventually wound up being like, okay, I'm gonna go to bed and get some sleep at least. So, I don't know, probably fell asleep at, like, 3 a.m. I, uh have a probably about like maybe three and a half hours sleep at best something like that so i'm a little bit sleep deprived during this whoops if i had realized that three houses or three houses three hopes whatever they're the same game no they're not uh, if i had realized that three hopes was gonna go the way that it did <laughs> maybe i wouldn't have uh maybe i wouldn't have streamed it last night maybe i would have saved it for another night but ah well, too late now. And also, hello, hello, Destine. Hope that you're doing well today as well. <laughs> Fire Emblem 3-2. Yeah, that. That thing, Rebob. Though it's a lot farther than 3. Um, but yeah, anyway. We're gonna see what's going on with this. We're gonna see what's going on here. We're gonna discuss a little bit. I might not be as energetic as normally because of that. I apologize. I am looking forward to, you know, Fragapalooza coming up here. So we're gonna be setting up today and such and then we're gonna have like four days of gaming and it's gonna be crazy Hello, everyone. looks really quiet on obs that make it better i don't know I'll just turn down my microphone to make it closer to that. Ever since I went to the Fragapalooza test event, it freaking messed with all my audio settings. I don't know why. One day I'll have to take like a dedicated session to fix all my audio. For now, just deal with it being like quieter, I guess. Essentially, I'm so sorry. After I will figure years, out a solution a in the future. Will come together August 18th anyway, to 21st anyway in let's uh, <laughs> does it now. Battles, but also to be together, celebrating old friendships also, and creating think, new ones. Also, thinking about competitive Pokemon, is Sword and Shield stole the go-to competitive Pokemon game since they didn't bother to do anything, <laughs> anything significant game, with like BDSP, Legends Arceus, nothing like that? Is Sword and Shield like stole the <laughs> modern competitive Pokemon game nowadays? Title of world champion in 2022. You know, it used to be year, that whatever was the most recent modern Pokemon game would always be, like, the competitive one. Titles. Nowadays, it's but just the one with, like, the most Pokemon, Pokemon, Pokemon with, like, the, and, like, the most functional mechanics after the whole, uh, after the whole situation there. Sadly sad, yes. Oh, there's Pokemon Unite. Doesn't that also still only have one map? Thinking about things. Anyway. But, yeah. But yeah, they more or less abandoned Gen 8 now, haven't they? Apart from like competitive, including our largest I guess. ever Pokemon Center World's pop up shop. For those unable to I think it'd be fun person, to go to a Pokemon Center one day. I think that'd be fun. On our dedicated live Quite frankly, for each product, this Pokemon Center has like some cool things. I mean, match for each you know, I order some things Pokemon online from Pokemon Center sometimes. My mask that I wear every day is a Pokemon Center one. I have like a, you know, an Umbreon Espeon mask that I wear thing, most days, you know. My honor to unveil for I think that'd be fun to uh, visit a Pokemon World Center one day. Pikachu trophy. Take a look. <laughs> I guess I'm trying to like incentivize people to like come back and get into like competitive stuff with a game from three years ago, I guess, as opposed to their more recent games. Thank you. We look forward to seeing you in London. And <laughs> Thank now, you for I'll looking at this one, uh, this one trophy. Anyway, yeah. 
Thank you very much, I've, Mr. Brown. I've never really followed competitive Pokemon With all that uh, all that much. After, after I caught them all in Gen 6, I very, very battles. briefly started getting into it, but it wasn't seat. quite for me. Now, Not quite. I'd like to share some news about a few of our games. Pokemon Sleep. I'd be very surprised. For the first go. time in three years, we held in-person Pokemon uh, Go Fest events <laughs> My in mom still plays Pokemon Seattle. Go all the time. And this weekend, I don't. We will be an event in I haven't played it like Japan. since it came out, but my mom plays it a whole bunch. She trades gifts with Carvia's dad. She used to trade gifts and with Carvia's mom, and then Carvia's mom stopped playing. And now she trades gifts with Carvia's dad. <laughs> it will be held on anyway. But yeah, do so some tournaments and nothing else, but that's about it. Yeah, sometimes I'll watch like some of the final final kind of Chosen matches and whatnot of curiosity i haven't in like a while so i didn't know if like sword shield was still the go-to competitive Pokemon one right now but completing special research but sometimes in the Will past i would uh i would do that aether foundation ultra stuff or no ultra recon squad that's what i meant Professor the freaking dude is all about ultra necrozma you know gen 7 stuff like that but yeah i'm gonna ask you ask because like pokemon coliseum merch even though it most definitely is not that would be pretty neato Pokemon Call seems like game. one of the uh, it's a special only old console Pokemon games I have on my shelf. For 15 minutes, it can attract Pokemon not normally seen uh, in your area, and rumors oh. say it might even attract I, legendary. Pokemon. I was about to say, hasn't that been out since launch? But I guess not. <laughs> I guess not. In that Over case, the six years, we've seen I know that there are some nerds in the Discord server who also Pokemon still play Go. Pokemon Go, like that anime nerd, for example. I think Guzma plays. Whether you're making new friends you know, one of the Go biggest Fest issues I've had with Pokemon Go Pokemon since it first came out is the, the way that they handle the candies, like especially Go, as they add more Pokemon, and that just made me think of that started. as I saw like 700 plus Pokemon. I feel like if you catch, say, a Bulbasaur, it should give you two grass type candies and one poison type candy, not three Bulbasaur candies. Because while it wasn't that big a deal when the game first came out and it had like, you know, the original 150, 151 Pokemon, whatever it was, it wasn't that big a deal back then. Nowadays with over 700 as they've added more, the fact that you need to get more and more of the same species slash evolutionary line to power it up, with more and more Pokemon that makes it harder and harder to do when you know there's so many others there and so type of quick i feel like you know one of the changes that there should have been is just make it so that you can apply progress based off of like typing essentially you know have like primary secondary typing still get like three candies whenever you catch a pokemon but base it off of their uh, base it off of their typing rather than uh you know rather than it being purely species wise i might actually turn up my mic a little bit more to like here I feel like that would have been the, the good go-to way to handle adding more and more generations of Pokemon. I think it's up to like generation seven now, something like that. Yeah, it would be something that would make it a lot more manageable while you have that number of Pokemon. But the fact that it's still to this day, catch this exact species slash evolutionary line on mass, like I don't think I'd ever be able to get back into Pokemon Go and that being like the biggest reason why. Like it's just too convoluted to uh you know continue with like one species slash evolutionary line instead of make it based off of typing and that was pro and that was one of the big reasons why i dropped the game like shortly after it came out as well if they had had it based off of typing i probably would have been playing a lot more i don't know why they haven't it seems like such a no-brainer decision to me are they remaking gen 2 that's red right there I mean, Gen 2 is pretty hype. It's already gotten, you know, Heart Gold, Soul Silver, and stuff, but three year anniversary at Masters EX, eh. Hey. I know that guy. I know that guy. He's like my favorite guy. Oh, that makes sense. Even though I just saw Pokemon Masters EX seeing N for a hot second there, at first my heart got a little bit excited, like, whoa, something going on with that. But then I was like, oh yeah, Pokemon Masters EX for a hot second there. I guess I'm just such a big freaking Gen 5 stan that like, <laughs> you know, I just pay attention to like that for a hot second. But yeah, anyway, um, it's back for the it's nth it? time. Looks like oh, it's freaking Cafe yeah, Remix. remix game. I haven't really played that. Anyway, um, Make delicious drinks and dishes with yeah, I dropped Pokemon Go like shortly-ish after it came time. out. Like, part of the initial craze, but then didn't continue with it. If they had, you know, the whole thing revolved with species going on, it 
I probably would have stayed in it longer. And as for Gen 2, even though Gen 2 has got a remake before with like Heart Gold Soul Silver, unlike Gen 1, I feel like if Gen 2 got another remake, people would be pretty hyped about that. Quite frankly, is what seeing a red there made me think of. You know, because we've seen Gen 1 and Kanto like a bazillion times and a lot of Gen 1 pandering and like, you know, a lot of different generations ever since like Generation 6, you know, it's like, hmm, what way can we pander to Gen 1 now? So even though, even though we have seen the Johto region a few times with like gold, silver, crystal, and heart, gold, soul, silver, I feel like people would actually be pretty hyped for a Gen 2 remake, assuming it wasn't like BDSP. You know, the one cool thing about BDSP was <laughs> is that it's very highly moddable. So a lot of people have already been making like fan games out of BDSP, and it's actually kind of cool to see. And I wonder if I should like check some out at some point for funsies because I'm a little bit intrigued. But yeah, Pokemon, please tell us something. I do. I mean, it'll probably be a bunch of new stuff about Scarlet and Violet. They just want to like get all this stuff out of the way initially because you know no one's gonna give a crap about this kind of thing if they don't announce it at the beginning beginning is the thing you know so they gotta announce it like at the beginning of the presentation and then the big scarlet and violet stuff afterwards because if they do like the big scarlet and violet stuff first then they probably figured that like a lot of people are gonna click off the presentation and not see the stuff pertaining to like their apps and stuff you know so there's that hello hello Opland. didn't really miss anything they're just you know doing their app stuff does not reflect actual gameplay wow they have a like big text like right at the beginning it used to be like a little note at the bottom but i guess since they know that like <laughs> so many super diehard fans will use it to like defend the game not looking like it's in the best of states they're just gonna start putting it at like big text at the beginning even though literally all it means is like you know the game is gonna look a little bit different when it comes out don't sue us if like it doesn't look the same <laughs> they realize that you know it's gotta be interpreted in a wildly different way so now it's just at the beginning yeah the motorcycle thing where bobs motorcycle things whoa climbing <laughs> okay well that's certainly something yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if it was actual file footage. I like how you can go through water and stuff as well. The rich culture. I don't know how I feel about this ad. The Pokemon. Let's tell you all about these things that we claim that we have in a big text so that you don't have to actually fact check it. I don't know. I don't know. I mean, I mean, possibly what I'm seeing so far actually looks better than the initial trailer i mean <laughs> it could be showing select things there but what i'm seeing here thus far does not look as bad as i expected oh i like i like mr long-haired guy there you're interesting looking aren't you <laughs> look at this thing oh it's freaking like bowser like uh, it's freaking super mario 3d world it's like a bigger version of bowser's car from that is what it basically was Okay, but will the multiplayer actually work in this game? Because the multiplayer in Sword and Shield was a joke. So if there's going to be, like, playing with friendos out in the field, and, like, you being on your respective motorcycle things... <laughs> something that's not this game. Just kidding. I mean, it definitely has some potential and whatnot, you know. But, what? Is this the new gimmick? Turn them into crystals! Turn them into something physically more valuable! Oh, dear God. Yes, we're turning them into gems now. Why? But why, though? I... <laughs> yeah, now you can sell them for more money. Now you can sell them to Team Rocket. Who's gonna sell them on the black market? Pre-orders now available. You force them to be shiny, to quite literally, not a color change, shiny like a gem. Region.
But yeah, seeing like the motorcycle multiplayer thing where Bob next to one another, it makes me wonder if the multiplayer is actually gonna work in this game or if they just, you know, specifically set that up for that scene there to make it look like it works so it actually doesn't. Because, you know, playing with one another in Pokemon Sword and Shield, it really didn't work. Sometimes you'd see some other players like around the field teleporting in and out. If you wanted to play together with friendos, you'd have to like wait for the right stamps that felt like they would never show up despite the fact that your friend would be like oh yeah it's set up the lobby should be at the right you just never see it you know so we shall see so i guess like the main legendary of this game you kind of have throughout the adventure rather than getting towards the end and you kind of use them to navigate the field that's interesting It'll be interesting to see how that plays out you know <laughs> you think so as needed while you explore every nook and cranny of the region i do kind of wish that the scarlet one you know rotated the wheel things as well but you will you be know. enrolling at a certain academy as a student pokemon three houses <laughs> look at the freaking pulty guys special independent study project awaits you i like the it treasure hunt. Through it, the treasure hunt embark on a journey to find treasure of your own Here a treasure hunt across the whole region is that basically just the professors being like here's an excuse for you to screw off i don't want you in my school anymore you know <laughs> maybe maybe you'll go to eight pokemon Ooh. gyms and aim for the champion rank in these games some of the shots actually look not half bad some of them look like they were made in a game jam I do like the human models though. That was something that I was pointing out like during the initial trailers. I like the human models. I thought they were pretty neat. You know. But yeah. Which story will you begin with? How will you progress through? Maybe it could well be. Instead of just giving you like a legendary right at the beginning, unless they want to be like you know. BDSP something like that. Professor oh, you Sarah bought other games from Professor us? Here's Charo. like mythicals for free. On I don't know which freaking title Mr. I'm gonna do a playthrough of. He looks super chill. Jacques he looks super Jacques British. Teacher who teaches biology. And stuff. Jack. You'll have your battle-loving friend, Nimona. I like her. And you'll meet Arvin, an upperclassman and a great cook. <laughs> I like his hair. There's also Penny, a shy student in your grade. That's I uh, got hair there based on the Nintendo too. Switch, I guess, or something. Like Grusha, You're doing Violet. Gym leader. It was funny. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> look at that guy. Enrich your adventures. I do like the human models. They're pretty cool. Anyway. When I was uh, at GameStop and pre-ordering like a bunch of games for the year, they asked if I wanted to do like the Pokemon Scarlet and Violet double pack, and I was like, "It's just mud." Anyway, <laughs> they asked me if I wanted to pre-order the double pack of Scarlet and Violet, and I was like, "Oh, look how cute it is!" I was like, "Yeah, I don't know about the uh, the double pack per se," and they were like, "Well, if you want, we can always put you down for it, and you can change your mind later. Then you know we can change it." And I was like, "Hmm." Okay, so I might potentially get that and, you know, give one to my, uh, you know, my little cousin. So I might do, like, work out some sort of a deal with him. <laughs> Figure out which one he wants to do. I don't know. I don't know. I mean, if I'm the one doing that, I have priority on, you know, which one I want to get there. So, I was thinking about potentially doing Pokemon Scarlet because, uh, you know, it seems like Violet's all about, like, future technology and next level kind of stuff. And I'm currently in the middle of trying to restore a truck from 1952. And back then, you know, it's still advanced and whatnot. It's still complicated and stuff. But, you know, it's sim a lot simpler compared to today. So I figured, like, maybe that'd be a lot more fitting there. Like, let's do a... It doesn't have to be super complicated. Let's do these simple systems and stuff then. I figure. So the that's why I was potentially thinking about Scarlet. I don't know. Shine, like I don't gems. know. Is there that fancy newfangled technology? Some of that old style technology and stuff? My goodness. So this is the gimmick of this game, huh? <laughs> My goodness. It's freaking Luigi's Mansion 3 or Luigi's I Mansion 2. Which one introduced like the ghosts that look like that? Which can provide a boost to a Pokemon's type and make its moves stronger. <laughs> So their new uh, so their new gimmick is like one of the most basic things they could have potentially done despite being super flashy, like uh, like it bumps up, it makes their moves stronger. Like whoa, I never went against it, you know. Anyway, so there's that. I guess there's gonna be like you know 
but there could be sometime, that become grass or water type after so sometimes flourish. type changes and there'll be like maybe unique moves and stuff Pokemon like that with rare terra types you know i've i've been saying this for a good while but like not during this this stream but just like in Terra general battles. i feel like rather than introducing a new gimmick every generation trying to spice things up i feel like the gameplay itself needs a major rework and i honestly despite the fact that it was kind of clunkily handled i did honestly like what legends arceus had going on with like strong and agile style as an attempt to like you know actually change the gameplay system how it works at its core i did like some moves in that direction but now it's back to just like the same exact gameplay that we've experienced for you know a couple decades now and with a new gimmick that honestly seems to be one of the new lamest ones if i'm gonna be uh if i'm gonna be honest so that kind of regard just seems kind of eh, you know and and like pokemon isn't really evolving and changing if it's going back to like you know the old thing where bobs you know anyway hello hello nevermore how are you doing today but yeah crystal is always the same for the different types yeah so there's not even a whole lot of variety then in that a case i mean it seems like there are like some unique ones like they were showing the flying pikachu one for example the frame rate did not seem to be the best but uh but yeah games are available to pre-order at participating retailers now yeah, this gimmick see oh, of course there's an early purchase bonus. Your independent study in the Paldea region begins in three months. We Man. await your enrollment. I can't believe it's only three months away. <laughs> Legends Arceus still feels like, you know, it wasn't out all Thank that long ago. Because it wasn't. Wait, is that the presentation? <laughs> I guess they were like, alright, let's show off all our app stuff. Because, you know, like right at the beginning, because otherwise no one's gonna care. And then show off the fact that, like, the new gimmick this time is crystals. Also, freaking, here's, like, some characters and stuff. Here's multiplayer. Why is stuff like this being... I'm so confused. I guess... Oh, because it's freaking YouTube Kids is why. So it's, like, all this freaking crap that's being pushed at me now. Anyway. um, And, like, here's a promise of multiplayer. But, you know before uh before pokemon sword and shield came out they had like big lofty promises for the multiplayer of that game and the multiplayer of that game was probably the worst in the whole series i would say so you know showing players being side by side and whatnot i am very quite worried you know i am a little bit worried about that let's get some music going this is what we can do let's uh let's see here let's get some xenoblade chronicles 3 music going Kev is calling it a day. Sure, maybe I'll put on a playlist a little bit later. Hopefully Nintendo doesn't try to like take me down for playing uh, for playing this and now I can uh, adjust my microphone a little bit more and whatnot. All right. Yeah, so if I adjust my volume here and stuff. So, you know, I usually, you know, discuss things here and whatnot afterwards. I don't really feel like there's a whole lot to discuss this time, you know? It really doesn't feel like it really felt like an excuse to be like Scarlet and Violet news so that we can, you know, let you know that our apps still exist and stuff. Um, if this initial trailer felt kind of jarring and weird, I still find it very strange how they started doing a, how they freaking, uh, where is it here? Yeah, trailer does not reflect actual gameplay experience. I wonder if the, <laughs> I wonder if the big reason why they did this, like it's not even just the uh, gameplay footage is not final. Trailers do not reflect actual gameplay experience. It makes me wonder if they specifically like set up, you know, the thing where Bob's where it shows like players being side by side on their legendary motorcycles. You know, stuff like, uh, where was it here? It was one of these shots. It makes me wonder if they set up something like this on like PC rather than the Switch or just like rigged it up to look like what they hope it's gonna look like. And then like by the time the multiplayer actually comes out, <laughs> it won't even be out at launch. It'll be like BDSP where they add it like sometime afterwards. Well, multiplayer was out for BDSP at launch. It's just, you know, not all of it. They just added like some of the features of it like decently afterwards. Makes me wonder if, you know, it's going to launch like freaking Sword and Shield and you're going to have like yourself and other players just like teleporting around and whatnot all willy nilly for you to sometimes interact with. Like, I honestly wouldn't be surprised. Yeah, <laughs> that's not in game. I, uh, I very highly doubt it. 
and whatnot. Leaks were better, not gonna lie. This is worrying. I haven't heard anything about the leaks myself. I, uh, I did see a little bit of mention of it in the Discord server of saying, like, basically knew what the presentation already was, and that apparently there's, like, some promising stuff coming. I did if there was, you know, some leaked stuff that seemed like it was promising to come in this presentation, it doesn't seem like it was in said presentation, you know? So, so what did they unveil? They unveiled, like, a multiplayer that's probably not gonna work. Um, Mud Whooper. I guess, like, some new Pokemon and some new humans. Is that it? <laughs> oh, and the freaking gimmick. Which seems to be, like, the lamest one of them all. Like, a lot of people hated Dynamaxing, for example. I didn't mind it all too much. I thought it was kind of eh, you know, and, you know, not anything all that stand out. I feel like this gimmick is gonna be, like, the forgettable one. You know, like, Mega Evolution was the first gimmick where it's like, Okay, well, there's something, uh, there's something going on here. Um, and then, you know, Generation 7 Z moves, people were like, Okay. Okay, that's something or other. And then freaking Dynamaxing was like the big controversial one where people either like loved it or hated it. And I feel like this one is going to be like the forgettable one. You know, the thing that basically becomes something that they can market and put out there like, ah, it's crystals now. Whoa, look how cool and crystal they are. And, you know, everyone's going to forget about it. Like, <laughs> I feel like out of the gimmicks thus far, of Mega Evolution Z moves and Dynamaxing. Down the line, this is gonna be the one that people like forget the quickest, <laughs> is what I feel like. It's just a guess, but that's my uh, that's my guesstimate and whatnot. Hello, hello, Estu, Cansado, and Rogue Gamer. Yeah, I'm not exactly feeling it either. I was kind of hoping that this trailer would give me like some new things to uh, you know, potentially be like, whoa, this does have like a lot of promise after all, but. You know, it still does. I mean, the thing that's most promising about this game, in my opinion, is the whole idea of it being open world and you being able to, like, handle things in whatever order. That freaking treasure hunt, I guess it was, like, around the region and, like, tackling gyms and whatnot in whatever order as you explore around a truly open world. They didn't mention anything about that in this trailer, like, at all. Apart from just, like, you know, passing mention of, like, oh, uh, yeah, you can explore this world with a legendary Pokemon and take it at your own pace and whatnot. A story that weaves as you desire. It's like, okay, are you actually gonna, like, show us a little bit of how that works instead of just having it, you know, as text on screen and having us take your word for it? Oh, no, we just have to take you at your word? Okay, I guess we're not gonna have any idea what that looks like until the actual game comes out. Neat. I guess we'll just take your word for it for now, you know? Like... So, what's in my opinion the most promising thing about this game, we didn't even see anything about, you know? Instead, we just see, you know, things that they can market, essentially, <laughs> I guess. Even though that promising thing would have been something that they could market as well, just in a different way. But, you know, I guess, uh, I guess Pokemon marketing is just show, like, whatever the current flashiest thing is, like, in your face right now. And try to get people hyped about that, rather than, you know focusing on some of the finer details, so, you know, I guess we're not getting that, even though there was plenty of time in the presentation to be talking about that. It makes me a little bit worried that maybe there's not a lot going on for that there, and that, you know, the whole open world thing or Bob might not be as cool as it could potentially be. Maybe. Time will tell. We'll only know for sure when it comes out, but we'll see. We'll see. We shall see how it goes, but yeah, I'm, uh, I'm worried, <laughs> you know? But yeah, where's that no frame Pachirisu you saw? Wait, what do you mean like no frame? What you mean by that? Freaking play the thing. But yeah, um, you know, I'm just gonna put freaking uh, the Xenoblade 3 theme on repeat for now. But yeah, have the motorbike from Breath of the Wild. You have the motorbike big, big and whatnot. <laughs> so choppy, just the uh. Patch of research, just like a lot of the game. Shots like this actually look pretty good. Like, one's like that one kind of iffy. But attention, please. I feel like. <laughs> oh, this trailer. This initial thing where Bob feels a little bit wonky. This does not get me hyped for the treasure hunt. 
and they didn't say anything about what the treasure hunt actually is they just say like get to know the new region venture across it with like your motorcycle legendary and that's about all we know so you know the whole the abundant nature <laughs> <laughs> the whole most the rich culture yeah it's super rich here the most promising thing about the game we know nothing about so you know so you know there's uh there's that there but yeah i'm still confused on why they give became a ride on legs i don't which one is that one the technology one or the old timey one where will you go i don't know who will you meet? I don't know the characters we've seen in like the trailers here and stuff. But yeah. And they give the red one wheels it just runs for show. There are wheels for show, I guess. I'm glad that freaking Bowser from Super Mario 3D World is going to be making an appearance. Glad to see that. Right on is the future. Okay, gotcha, gotcha. I guess, yeah, the front legs, there, you know, to have like limbs and stuff, I suppose. Well... Yeah, I <laughs> I feel like the big important things about this game we still don't know. The, the things that are important in my opinion at least. Find something to treasure. You still haven't given me something to though. You've given us like crystal Pokemon because sure, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> but I still don't feel like we have something to uh, treasure. Show us the good vertical slices. That's why they couldn't give us more regional forms. One thing that they're not going to be a uh, not gonna be all that good there. I mean, even the one regional form that they gave here didn't seem all that good. They just took Wooper and made Wooper muddy. Like, <laughs> it's not all that creative of a difference, you know? It doesn't, uh, it doesn't seem like, yeah. I feel like this is probably the state that, you know, we're gonna see the game, like, in when it comes out. Or slightly worse if, like, some of that isn't native. Like, after all, it did say... You know, it's not reflective of actual gameplay. So it makes me wonder if, you know, the shots that they took here weren't like if it doesn't reflect actual gameplay experience. Like, does that just mean like the cinemat more cinematic trailer not representing gameplay experience? Or does that mean that, you know, this is rendered on like PC or something like that? And we're going to get something more akin to like a Legends Arceus looking and feeling when it comes out where it doesn't really run, you know? This is what I wonder. So, you know, there's a, there's that blarg. Travel across Paldea. Yeah, so, I guess it's like the whole ride Pokemon of Legend Cersei is bundled all together, and whatnot. You know, that the animations on them don't exactly look the best. They're passable, at least. Why does this look like freaking uh? I've never played Banjo-Kazooie, but from what I know from, like, Smash Ultimate and from what gameplay footage I've seen, why does this literally just straight look like Mumbo's Mountain? And, you know, I don't want to say it looks like the N64 era there directly like that, because it does look better than that, but it doesn't exactly look the best. Like, I, I could have made something like this in Planet Coaster, like, no problemo. Just do, like, a little spiraling thing or bop. Do like some little splashes of green textures, like do a freaking sneeze of green over here, another sneeze over here, just like paint it on a little bit and then bam. Yeah, the super abundant nature and whatnot, you know. Um, but yeah, it feels too cinematic, gonna feel like more of a piece of wheat bread in a cartridge slot of the Switch, maybe. Maybe, maybe. That's what I, uh, that's what I worry about. I just started, <laughs> I started getting a text from my cousin and that made me wonder if like he just watched the presentation and he had something texting me about that. No, he's sending me texts about how chain, uh, how about new things he's finding about chain attacks in Xenoblade Chronicles 3 is what he's doing. <laughs> anyway, um, <laughs> so glad to see that he's up early. He's freaking taking this week off work to play Xenoblade 3, <laughs> interestingly enough, but yeah, at least there's that. Here's your prediction, good Metacritic score from those who like the series. Honestly, why no news from LA? No news from LA? What, like, what do you mean LA? You might have to clarify here, I'm sorry to say. Um, abundant nature equals empty AF, yeah. <laughs> That's what it's feeling like. Oh yeah, abundant nature. 
Here's like a field with like two trees and some grass and stuff. So abundant and stuff, you know. A man of culture, yeah. Him and I have been texting back and forth about Xenoblade Chronicles 3 a decent bit. How are you doing today, Tux? To actually acknowledge a box art legendary depiction of motorcycles, you can respect that. Yeah, there's that. But, uh, well, one's a motorcycle. The one has wheels that it doesn't even use. You know. But, yeah. Either way, Xenoblade Chronicles 3 is already just legends of better and maybe even Scarlet and Violet. I'm really liking Xenoblade Chronicles 3 thus far. Like, you know. The way that it's handled there doesn't seem to be perfect either. Like, as I've been exploring some of the bigger areas, the frame rate has been, you know, hurting a little bit. But my goodness, I look around and see, like, an absolutely bootyful world there. And so many entities, like, currently on screen. And it's like, wow. Like, good old Monolith Soft for figuring out how to get this working here and whatnot. You know, it's the, uh, it's the area that's all connected there without any loading screens. Like, the super big, massive area that's, like, a bunch of different types of areas all connected. That area. I was in Xenoblade 3 where the, uh, frame rate hurt a bit. And it did make me a little bit tempted to, uh, you know, if I wasn't a content creator doing, like, a series and I knew how to, like, transfer my save file and whatnot, I'd be tempted to emulate it just to get, like, good frame rate and stuff going. But that's, like, the only instance where I've, like really notice the frame rate being a wonky in that game is in that freaking massive area and even then it's not like you know deal breakingly bad but it's noticeable at least but apart from the little things like that freaking xenoblade chronicles 3 is beautiful and whatnot xenoblade chronicles 3 puts your switch to its limits and you're just so happy playing all the way through and finishing level 60 how is everyone beating xenoblade 3 like before me the game came out like Less than a week ago, since it just came out on, like, Friday, and it's currently Wednesday. I have, like, over 30 hours in the game, and freaking everyone is somehow, like, pulling out some forbidden sorcery to just, like, get through. Like, how does this- how does this work? I'm so confused. Like, Guzma just beat it a couple days ago, for example. One of the mods around here and a fellow content creator. He just freaking beat it a couple days ago. I'm just like, how? What the heck? <laughs> I thought I was going through it fast. You know, focus on the story and finish at 39 hours, huh? Hmm. Intriguing, because yeah, I'm at a bit over 30 hours. I'm like at the end of chapter three right now, but yeah, I'm very much enjoying it there. <laughs> no sleep for the determined, I guess not. To show lagginess in the raids though, huh? So maybe not everything here is rendered on like PC. Yeah, so there are, uh, so there are g the gyms and stuff, but you know I'm intrigued by some of the new models but the freaking Arcanine just straight up looks like you know a model that somebody made as like a mod to put in some other game like freaking Minecraft or Skyrim or something like that it, it doesn't look like something you know that would be official it just kind of looks like something that was like a mod in some other game because and it doesn't even quite look like it fully belongs i feel like like it looks like this was some like video game of some sort and somebody modded pokemon into it is what i feel like you know <laughs> that's that's the impression that i'm getting there so no shadows yeah that well uh there's some shadows there but i guess maybe not in battle and stuff yeah, it kind of feels like it was a Unity game jam. Maybe not as much as Legends Arceus. I do feel like the game looks better than Legends Arceus. But, you know, it still feels that way to an extent. And whatnot. <laughs> yeah, what? No, I've never seen Dragon Ball. So I know that that's one of the things that you're not supposed to say on the internet. That you've never seen Dragon Ball. But I haven't, so I'm not actually familiar with that there. But yeah, just in the ice area, huh? Hmm. But yeah, wait a minute, this is the fourth generation with the same Arcanine? What do you mean? I, I'm not quite sure what you mean, I'm sorry to say. Yeah, I like uh, the characters and whatnot. Jax, pretty neat. I, I still like the rival the most with like the, uh, I forget what her name is, but with the, uh, you know, the strand of green hair there. I think, I think that's Nito. Pokemon of the Paldea region. Yeah, some of the textures on some of the models Look pretty solid, like freaking Pine Echo there. Yeah, Whoop Propel Day in form. It's literally freaking. They just made it brown. And they just made it more boring than the original. <laughs> By taking away, like, some color and stuff. 
is all they did. You look so wonky. Set Titan? Set Titan? I don't know. Something or other. Something along those lines. Whoa, who's that? Spigarito is its name? Whoa! Anyway. <laughs> yeah. Let's just see here. All you ask is one thing from Game Freak. Please let some birds be on the ground. There were birds on the ground in Legends Arceus. What do you mean by birds on the ground? What you mean? That's a charming thing for Bob for the Pokedex. Additional additional game systems required for multiplayer. Yeah, so is the multiplayer of this game actually gonna function? Oh my good gracious. Um Look look at him. He just looks like a freaking animatronic robot. He looks like something that you'd find from FNAF like before it kills you. Like that's literally what that is. <laughs> but yeah, is the multiplayer actually gonna work in this game or is it gonna be Sword and Shield? <laughs> is it Nintendo Wi-Fi, of course not? Well, I don't just mean like, in terms of connection. Like, you know, if you play something like Smash Ultimate, Nintendo and Nintendo's online, is gonna be functional. It's not gonna be like stand out, it's gonna be kind of clunky, but at least it works. I'm talking about like the way that Sword and Shield handles multiplayer with like people constantly teleporting in and out. The situation with stamps where it's like you're trying to play with a friend and they say like, oh yeah, I made the lobby, the stamp should be available. And then the stamp just like never shows up and stuff. It's just like a lie, it's just an epic prank, essentially. It makes me wonder if it's gonna be like that because Nintendo Online is already not that good, but then combine that with freaking the way that Sword and Shield handled multiplayer and it's like nothing ever works, you know? Um, so it makes me wonder if like multiplayer is actually gonna work in this game to an extent to as much as Nintendo's crappy online can handle or uh, is it just gonna be like Sword and Shield again or you want to play with like your friendos and sometimes if like the stars align then maybe you can, but otherwise, like, tough luck, you know? <laughs> so, so there's that. Oh, because of Sky Battles of Gen 6, literally every bird has to be a flying animation? Oh, you're saying, like, some birds, like, fighting on the ground? Is what you mean? Maybe, maybe. But yeah. Yeah, it's probably not gonna be working day one if, uh, you know, the past several titles have been any indication. I still find, like, I've talked about before, and, you know, it doesn't deserve like a whole crazy discussion today since, you know, today's just, you know, th a thing or Bob with this and, you know, save the crazier discussions for video essays and whatnot. But as I mentioned in like the Legends Arceus video essay, I still find it really jarring how, you know, despite the increased workload of having to make games for a home console now rather than a handheld where it's a lot easier to pump out regular titles, especially when you use like the same engine for said titles over and over again. Plus like potentially same region if you're making like, you know, third versions or stuff like that. While you have like a set release window doing that handheld using same engines, potentially same region in some cases where it's a lot more feasible to get out titles on a regular basis. But then you go to the Switch, do something completely different with, like, each title. Well, not completely, completely different, but, you know, each title is a lot more set apart than, you know, games on the same console in the past, you know? And there's a much higher workload of it being a home console, and you have the exact same release schedule, if not an even faster release schedule, what with, like, you know, BDSP late last year, Legends Arceus early this year, then Scarlet and Violet late this year, for, you know, three new titles in the span of, like, one year altogether. That kind of crazy schedule with an increased workload here. Like, it's not going to be feasible. It's going to reflect in the quality, and we've seen that thus far. But rather than taking the additional time that they need to, like, really, you know, get this into a state that's deserving of, like, the Switch's quality, they'd rather just keep, you know, pumping it out. Whatever. Whatever, you know, the- oh my goodness, is that the low frame rate Pachirisu there? <laughs> anyway, um, we'll either pump them out, like, you know, as soon as can be done, like, to whatever release schedule. Get at least one game every single year, if not two, now, you know. Literally, out of four months, isn't it like three months now? Something like that? Yeah, I mean- 200 isn't isn't a number to scoff at 
but that's assuming that you have like you know the dedicated time to like give it the attention it deserves like freaking look at xenoblade chronicles 2 for example xenoblade chronicles 2 was an absolutely breathtaking world and it was made by like 40 developers is the thing the difference is it was like given the proper time that it needed you know as opposed to uh this whole super regular release window here but they're able to do it because it's got such insane brand power that people aren't going to be buying this game because it looks like an incredible video game that they want to play people are going to be buying this because it's pokemon you know so the power that a brand and ip is able to have is you know phenomenal game, we kind of see it nowadays with like some other profit. some other big things in the media industry for example as well like like marvel in the movie industry for example where it's like despite lately being all over the place and being like okay what the heck is going on you know it's still gonna do like super well maybe not as well as like it has in the past but still like insanely uh, insanely well there because people are never gonna get tired of like marvel and superhero movies for example it's the same kind of idea with pokemon you know is the big quality pokemon quantity that's what it feels like you know that's what it feels like there. Like, the time between Xenoblade titles was, like, Xenoblade 1 was 2010, X was 2015, 2 was 2017, and now 3 is 2022. Like, you know, there's big gaps between these various different projects. That makes me actually, like, excited for new titles, and has got me really into Xenoblade Chronicles 3 as I've been playing that, and it's like, wow, this is insane. But Pokemon, while it's releasing, you know, a new title every single year, slash, you know, a new uh <laughs> two new titles that you hear what with legends arceus this year it's just it's just a means to have a new title out there that can be marketed like all times as like something relatively new like at this point legends arceus is still the thing that they can kind of have is like oh this is like a relatively new game you should totally get that is like the most recent pokemon game and then when scarlet violet comes out it'll be like ah look at this new pokemon game whoa play it and try it out and whatnot you know Especially considering, this is a, uh, I don't remember when the last time I've had this discussion was, but with Pokemon's brand power, basically everyone within, uh, within, you know, first world countries and whatnot is going to at least know somebody who's been really into Pokemon. That's why, like, Pokemon Go was so big, like, when it first came out, for example. Because while a lot of the people who got into Pokemon Go had never played Pokemon before, they're, like, familiar with it because of, you know, how big it is in the media industry. And, you know, we'll probably know somebody who's been super into it and want to see, like, what all the hype is about and whatnot. Give it a shot. That's how a lot of people wound up getting into Pokemon Go. That's why my mom still plays Pokemon Go to this day is because she played it back then and got into it and now, like, plays it up until this day, for example. So... You know, because Pokemon's the kind of thing where everybody's gonna at least know of it and whatnot and know that it's like a really big thing. It's like, oh, may as well like give it a shot. So now with the uh, Switch, you know, selling so much better than the Wii U did and being like an absolutely monumental console for Nintendo and whatnot with the Switch getting into so many households. So many sales are just like seeing the new Pokemon game on the shelf or advertise that it's like, huh, may as well, uh, may as well give that a shot. Like that's the case for a few people that I grew up with, for example. A few people that I grew up with, we were playing, like, our Nintendo DS's back in the day. They, uh, weren't as into gaming during, like, the 3DS era and whatnot. And nowadays, when they're older and, you know, have a Switch and whatnot, they, uh, they're just like, oh, well, I have a Switch and I'm trying to get into gaming stuff again. I heard that Pokemon Sword and Shield is out. Maybe I should try getting into Pokemon again because I really liked playing Pokemon back in the, uh, back in the day maybe that's my opportunity to like try out pokemon again so there's a lot of situations like that where it's not you know directly looking into said game like does this game look like an incredible video game it's like no it's getting into pokemon it's not for these friends of mine it wasn't like oh maybe this is my opportunity to get into pokemon sword and shield it's maybe this is my opportunity to get into pokemon because that's what the games are like you know they don't exactly have a whole lot of individuality these days compared to like a lot of game franchises out there so it's not into x pokemon title it's just being into pokemon you know so there's that yeah if it was released on the 3ds it would absolutely be incredible absolutely that freaking 
that friend that I was literally just talking about that I was, you know, talking about was trying to like get back into Pokemon Sword and Shield. He just now sent me a text. What incredible, uh, what an incredible timing. Though it's in regards to like Fragapalooza coming up here is the, uh, is the thing. But anyway, I find that really funny. That the person that I was just like drawing an example of like anonymously there literally just sent me a text. The odds. The odds of that happening. But yeah, uh, honestly be surprised if, wait, if this Sword and Shield weren't forgotten about when this game launches, wait, if this Sword and Shield? Do you just mean like if Sword and Shield in general? Because it does kind of seem like what Pokemon wants to do is, you know, release like the next thing, forget about the last thing, that's old news. Look at like the new thing that's here right now. And the moment you've uh, gotten used to it, it's like the next new thing is out, you know, immediately after. You don't get any chance to, you know, really, really <laughs> have this be like the main title for a long time because they get pumped out so fast, you know? But yeah, um, may as well give that a shot. It's literally the same. Oh, it's literally the same game as on your Game Boy. Yeah, it's not. It's not like the individual Pokemon games. It's just being into Pokemon, you know, Sword and Shield, but Gem, that's it. I wouldn't say that's it. I do think like the whole exploring around the world does have like some promise. It's like Sword Shield plus like Legends Arceus exploration and like new gimmick that everyone's gonna forget about is what it uh is what it kind of feels like. So, you know, in terms of exploring around, it seems like it'll be a lot better than Sword Shield's wild area, at least. It definitely seems like that. I do like some of the uh some of the visual effects are kind of neat in these areas. Sorta. Oh. But maybe maybe they're a little bit hard on the eyes. I don't know. I don't know. I feel like this kind of area is the kind of thing I need to see like several, several times until I, you know, truly understand how I feel about it, you know. But yeah. Remember someone comparing Star Wars to Pokemon once? Starting to think they had a valid point. <laughs> Might well be. I think we can smoke this anyway uh sorry <laughs> but i saw that that was like the first meme thought that i had in my uh, in my head there but yeah a lot of the environments don't really look all that natural it literally just looks like you know someone formed this hill in a 3d modeling program and then they like freaking sneezed textures onto it you know like what is going on with the grass here it's like okay this is a little bit of a level and then it just kind of like smears into here. It's like if you're working with like paint and you get like a little bit like over where you need to. And it's like, well, we ship tomorrow anyway. Um, so there's that. And in credit cards, I heard that you couldn't add funds anymore starting late this year. And then you wouldn't be able to like buy games anymore starting like March next year or something like that. Is what I heard there. But yeah, I felt that hard frame drop was probably max speed on Ethernet 2. What, with like the multiplayer thing that they're showcasing there? Also, the frame right here isn't exactly the best, is it? This is kind of like a, so how landscapes work. You know, I was mentioning earlier how, you know, Xenoblade Chronicles 3 does run like pretty well a lot of the time, but that game absolutely pushes the Switch to its limit, and there are sometimes the frame rate in that isn't that good. This frame rate that's running here. I've seen Xenoblade Chronicles 3 operate at this frame rate sometimes, but when you're like right smack dab in the middle of like the largest area that you can explore like down a straightaway in for like a long, long time without there being like any loading screens at all. And there's like a bazillion enemies on the screen. Like everywhere you look, there's like wildlife all over the place. All these different entities. You're controlling your freaking seven party members that are coming with you as you look across like this massive world. That's that's the situation in which I've had like, you know, frame frame rate issues in Xenoblade Chronicles 3. Seven party members right smack dab in the middle of like some of the craziest parts of the world and like a bazillion other entities operating like around you as well is a thing. I would get those kinds of frame rates. Whereas the Legends are the Legends are yes. Whereas Scarlet and Violet, it's like freaking four entities. And like some trees and stuff, I guess, in their environment. And like a really empty looking area. Like the lighting effect is pretty cool. But otherwise a pretty empty area with four entities is getting like the same frame rate as <laughs> that crazy situation in Xenoblade 3 there. So, you know, 
all the people that just go like, oh my goodness, Pokemon just looks this way on the Switch because it's the best the Switch can handle. No. <laughs> no, evidently not. You know, a frame where I had the gem battle didn't seem the best there. But yeah, this could literally be given to either one of these two franchises and have the exact same meaning. It started out as a fun experience that went through a journey to create something magical. And a slight dip, but everything got back on track. I'm just going to go back to like here for now. I don't know. Uh, then I start going downhill with every new part game. Worst of Wars only have a few parts every, a few good parts every now and then. Mayhap, mayhap. You know, when Sword and Shield first came out, I was initially someone who defended Sword and Shield because, like, and the things like Dexit and whatnot. But then after I played the game through, I was just like, hmm. Well, it was Pokemon, I guess. I was just like, you know. I couldn't really defend it as much anymore was a thing after after playing it there but little little what do you think that I was somebody that was actually like looking forward to sword and shield and whatnot and uh kind of defending it when it initially came out and like wow this is gonna be like a big cool thing I wasn't one of those uh I wasn't one of them naysayers at the uh at the beginning it was just after that came out and then the situation with how they were releasing some more Pokemon later, but not all. The whole freaking situation with Pokemon Home, which still disgusts me to this day. And then the situation going on with like BSP and Legends, like, oh. Oh. You know. Also, I'm just now noticing freaking apparently 11 minutes ago, Rogue Gamer dropped two bits and apparently the alert box didn't go off for that. Or maybe it did. And I just didn't notice. I appreciate the two bits there 11 minutes ago that I didn't notice for some reason anyway weird weird but yeah there's no breath of the wild is a wii u game and looks a hundred times better yeah it's really crazy to think sometimes that you know breath of the wild is a wii u game at the end of the day a little known fact about that game that you know it was originally designed for that console whereas nowadays it's more of like a fun fact did you know that breath of the wild is a wii u game but yeah um truly pokemon's garden test pilot yeah Maybe it is that after all. And the sad thing about it is as long as it's like a small step in a better direction, people are going to praise it as like a freaking masterpiece that, you know, all the, uh, all the bits of quality that are out the window for other situations can completely ignore that because as long as it makes like some small step in a better direction like Legends Arceus it's gonna be praised as like an insane game and one of the best Pokemon games ever made like that's what happened with Legends Arceus despite all its flaws like so many people praise it as like one of the best Pokemon games just because it did something different you know and you know if that doesn't tell you that the formula is stale, I don't know what does. You know, it's, it's also really funny that the same people saying like, Pokemon's perfect the way it is, it doesn't need a change, are the ones praising Legends Arceus as like one of the best games in the series for doing something different. You know, <laughs> I find that, uh, I find that rather funny there. But yeah, um, Star Wars and Pokemon are the same in that they are corporate products designed to make money and not designed to have artistic integrity anymore. Yeah, kind of feels like it. Now, people say this is the best the Switch can do, and they must have been playing $1 eShop games and licensed games that didn't even try, potentially. Alert did go off? Okay, maybe I did think back then, and I'm just not noticing. I just noticed it in the alert box, not the alert box, the stream labels, and I'm losing my mind, you know. So there's that. So even if the game comes out, like, barely functional, and, you know, has a lot of its features, like, not available at launch, and you know, is like an empty feeling thing. As long as it's a step in what people feel is a better direction, it'll be praised as like one of the best games in the series, just because it's like slightly different and makes like some small step in a new direction, you know? And, you know, I don't really feel like that's <laughs> quite justified there, but you know, Pokemon's a very, very, different community to be involved with sometimes let's just say fun fact for anybody who didn't know um because of my uh because of my video essays on pokemon i actually got freaking death threats during my most recent charity event to help fundraise for a not for profit that helps those with developmental disabilities yeah so <laughs> that was a uh, that was a thing that happened. I'm not I don't I'm not gonna lump you know people who send death threats and do stuff like that and like the same pool as just those who you know 
don't like what I say and are like, oh my goodness, you're so wrong. It's not like it's the same group of people. At least I sure hope not. Um, but, you know, when you've got like such a powerful like media brand, media IP and whatnot, that, you know, people look forward to just like the next Pokemon title just because it's a Pokemon title and that's it. It's like, you know, what are you, what are you gonna expect in terms of how they're how they're gonna view and whatnot? And that's kind of the way that I feel about like modern reviewers as well. Like we've had the discussions sometimes on on stream about like the way modern reviewers handle things. I don't really take you know big game reviewers or game journalists all that seriously nowadays because it feels like you know big game reviewers scores are often very different from how like the players actually see things a lot of the time not always but a lot of the time and i feel very much like big reviewers just rate games based on how close it is to what they think it's going to be rather than how good the game actually is it's just like oh is this close to what i expected it to be eight out of ten nine out of ten cool you know and that's you know i can't take reviews like that all that seriously anymore from these super massive game journalists and such but yeah if you could define new direction that would be great yeah it's not even a not even exactly defined like there was a lot of people that said sword and shield was taking things in a new direction praised it for that and stuff um but yeah deal with so much harmonia you don't run into these things yeah it's freaking it's wonky the uh the only two types of video essays that I've had really take off on my channel have been on Pokemon and Roller Coaster Tycoon. Those have been like the two subjects that I've like analyzed in depth that have gotten like a lot of attention. And you know, Pokemon has been the one where it's been like this super mixed kind of thing where Bob, where it's like, some people love me for what I'm saying. Some people hate me for what I'm saying. And it's like this whole freaking battlefield. Whereas Roller Coaster Tycoon, I make a video essay being like, wow, all these games suck now. And all the Roller Coaster Tycoon fans are like, <laughs> yeah, we know. Uh, <laughs> I find it I find it very interesting, you know, some uh, difference in a uh, fan base. It could also just be because, you know, all the people that were big into Roller Coaster Tycoon would have probably played like the good titles from like Roller Coaster Tycoon 1 to 3 from like 1999 to 2004 or whatever it was so you know everyone in that group is you know grown up by now essentially is the thing whereas uh whereas you know there's a lot younger of a lot younger of a demographic with uh with Pokemon and whatnot and you know I have uh I have you know several t it's I've ugh, I can't word say I've encountered situations several times where I'll have like some really young kid will come after me and then like maybe a friend of theirs will hop into like the discord afterwards being like so sorry about them like they're they're just like a young kiddo like <laughs> and it's like well <laughs> okay i guess but yeah it's a it's a weird freaking environment so you know it's funny <laughs> some fan bases are definitely a lot more open to criticism than others roller coaster tycoon fans are very very open to it and we're, they're like yeah we know it's crap whereas pokemon is like how dare you how dare these crystal things that look like they were you went straight out of a luigi's mansion there and applied directly onto pokemon is gonna be like the freaking best thing ever for like the half a year that it's relevant you know so i don't know pokemon had their chance to sell their game and they blew it they had the chance for hype, but dropped the bomb in their own net instead of the ground. And honest reviews are more like a reflection of corporate contracts now these days. Yeah, potentially. Trying to, you know, have a good impression on the company who's, you know, paying you money to do stuff like that. Almost as if the Pokemon fans become the plot of Xenoblade 3, while Agnes and Kevis fighting against one another. And that's the way that feels sometimes. I once had a group of kiddos freaking harassing me for like months on end starting on christmas day and going until like april or something like that and one of them from that group still sends me friend requests from time to time and i don't know why it's so weird anyway <laughs> that was a uh, that was a thing there said uh said group tried to cancel me on twitter a couple of times it was kind of funny to see honestly <laughs> it gives like a funny story later down the line um i think i've told the story during pokemon mystery dungeon before and whatnot 
Hey, whatever wants the full story later. It was freaking wacky. One of the wackiest things I've seen on the internet. I was very, very confused. Very, very confused. But yeah, also, hello, hello, Anima. How are you? Uh, how are you doing this morning? But yeah, didn't keep this promise when you said for BDSP, but if this game doesn't please you, you're dropping mainline Pokemon. I would have already dropped mainline Pokemon if I wasn't a content creator. I'm covering them as like a reviewer and whatnot. I'm covering for like the covering them for the sake of review purposes, sharing it on the channel, you know, sharing my impressions and my thoughts and whatnot throughout the whole thing. But if uh, if I wasn't a content creator, I would not have picked up Brilliant Diamond, Shine, and Pearl. I would not have picked up Legends Arceus. I would not have picked up like this game. Like the announce the situation of Pokemon Home with Sword and Shield, and then uh, you know, the announcement of Brilliant Diamond, Shine, and Pearl and Legends Arceus. Yeah, I would not have uh, done it. Like if I was a con if I wasn't a content creator, no way. But since I'm covering it as a uh, reviews, it's like, well, I guess we're going into this realm and you know, covering it as a review and whatnot. And yo, know, speaking of that, I've gotten uh, speaking of like freaking wacky people in the Pokemon community, I've gotten a lot of comments from people that feel like because I played and bought the game that I'm doing a review on, my review was completely invalidated. It's like, oh my goodness, you did all this talk about how it's like not so good, and then you bought it anyway. You're supporting these awful business practices. I can't take anything you have to say seriously. It's like, how else am I supposed to do a review on it as like a content creator? What, do you expect like a food critic who has like an established negative, uh, negative impression of this one food place to just like not freaking do his job as like a food critic there anymore just like staring through the window at like other customers eating the food and jotting down like his best guess of what what it's like without actually experiencing himself it's like no that's not how that works freaking what the heck but i've got a uh, staggering number of comments from people that feel like by me covering said game it somehow invalidates everything i have to say about said game if that's the case how would anybody get out like any opinion ever if it's freaking invalidated for the sake of you know analyzing the product in question to have said opinion that doesn't make any sense anyway i run into a, a lot of weird situations like that in the interrupts the interrupts is a weird place like my goodness gracious it's like ever since i started making like some is the video quality of this game worse every time or is that just me um <laughs> it feels like ever since i started making some video essays criticizing some of pokemon's business practices and quality and such i've been exposed to some very very wacky corners of the internet making themselves like very very known to me with how vocal they are let's just put it that way how about but yeah um but yeah, let's uh, see here. BSP was the biggest insult to your face. Why Gen 1, 2, 3 fans get rewarded so hard with the remix and BSP being awful, making the Gen 4 ba fan a badge of dishonor. Yeah, it's literally worse than Platinum from 2009 is the thing. You'd think it could have been that quality at the very, very minimum. And when it's worse than, you know, the third title from 2009 by a lot. It's like, wow. Just wow. <laughs> you know. But yeah, we shall see what happens and whatnot. Yeah, I would assume that it's more invalid if you don't buy the game you're reviewing and do like a full review without you having actually ever played the video game. I would assume so. Apparently that's uh, that's not the case. Okay, I'm getting emails from my university is all. I was just wondering what that email was. Like, I feel like situations like that are people just wanting you to not be allowed to have an opinion and will just, you know, find some reason to say that you're not allowed to have an opinion oh you just you just grew out of it you bought the product that you're reviewing you're not the target audience like i've seen so many excuses after excuse to just be like yeah you're not allowed to have an opinion nothing you have to say is worth taking into consideration at all because of this reason that i pulled out of my ass to uh to freaking you know do that so I can't imagine ever being like so in like I can't imagine following some like media IP so strongly that anytime somebody disagrees with me I need to like find some reason to make up on the spot why their entire opinion is invalid and I can't you know I'm not able to listen to anything they have to say seriously at all nothing's worth taking into consideration because of something that I just made up there 
like I, I can't imagine being in that boat, you know. How fun game is still your university emails me. I get so many regular uh, so many regular emails because I'm both student and staff, so I get like regular newsletters as both student and staff, and you can't disable them. It's really annoying. I don't care about the newsletters. Anyway, uh, it's just one of those essentially. But yeah. Um forgotten about all those parents who hated on GTA. I feel like there's a lot of situations like that where, you know, freaking parents will, you know, do that kind of thing because it's like, oh my goodness, the freaking, the video game is making, uh, making my kid violent and whatnot and not, you know, the fact that I'm not actually, you know, being a parent. I'm letting a, I'm letting, a, you know, a tablet slash a game raise my kid instead of me and I'm gonna get mad at the game for doing that, not my own negligence, you know? Being student staff is wild. It's pretty neato. I like being able to like walk from work to my classes and vice versa and stuff like that But yeah Yeah, it's I mean basically anything that can be used as a as a scapegoat for uh, Parents not being the best of parents essentially. All right. We've listened to enough of a uh, of this theme here I'm starting to get tired of it and stuff Let's listen to freaking glitch duck city's uh, jubilee village remix that's what we'll do here. It's pretty chill. It's pretty chill. Let's listen to that. Because, yeah, I am tired of listening to that same thing on repeat. Because this stream is not the first time I've been listening to that on repeat. I was listening to it during the Fragapalooza meeting the other day as well on repeat. Because it is a pretty good theme, you know. So, yeah. There's, uh, there's that. I would, uh, you know, normally at the end of these kinds of things, I would make, like, a thumbnail during the stream and such. But... I'm so incredibly tired at the same time and I kind of want to go back to sleep because, you know, I'm operating on a few hours of sleep. It literally looks like a FNAF animatronic. My goodness gracious. Um, <laughs> my, oh my. I mean, I could... I could do something, like, really simple. Andy, are you married? Both the Xenoblade Chronicles 2 and Xenoblade Chronicles 3 soundtracks. Oh, absolutely. Some of the best soundtracks on the Switch there. Another one of my close favorites on the Switch would have to be Octopath Traveler, in my opinion there. But yeah, uh, really want to know who named these mons? It was a Nigo Montoya. You killed my father. Prepare to die. This game doesn't deserve a custom thumbnail? Don't think so. Should I just like, you know, have a crystal thing? Revolve? I was originally going to do like that one shot with like the legendaries at the end there. But like, you know, I can just, whoops. I can just do the, uh, the thing where Bob there. Hold on. Let's just see here. Let's just see here. Boopity bop. Okay, that one, uh, that one has, like, the little thing where Bob there. Even more fun with multiplayer. Uh, I heard a decent bit about any good. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, man. I love me some Octopath Traveler. I do love me some of that. I wonder if I should just, like, do something like this. Oh, okay, I guess I gotta make a new document first. This is what I gotta do. Why is it opening it on my right window? So weird. Like, if we do something like that. Who's whatever stock thumbnail you find on the internet? <laughs> Hold on. Whoa, whoa, wait. Another wacky animation. <laughs> my goodness, the animations in this game. For the humans. <laughs> Welcome back, CJ. I might just do a... Wait. Yeah, right. I might just do something really basic here. That's what I might do. Like crop out one of the crystal thing where Bob's. We could, uh, we could make like a big arrow thing where Bob be like one of those YouTube thumbnails where you make like the freaking massive arrow pointing at the thing. I don't know. Okay, I can't even see the thing there. But yeah, so you are also accurate. What the freaking weird waving. Gosh darn it. Let's see here. Let's see here. Wait. Hold on. What was that one shot that I was looking for there? Gosh dang, I missed it again. Trying to get like the accurate control print screen. This is literally what happens when I make thumbnails for like my playthrough stuff. It's stuff like this. Gosh dang, I missed it again! My why, what am I getting emails about now? 
Yeah, freaking Students Digest, Undergrads Digest, Employees Digest. I got three emails so regularly. From all these, uh, all these thingamabobs. Hold on. Got it that time. There we go. But yeah, as we Chandelier's gonna have another chandelier on top of it. That'd be pretty wacky to see. That'd be pretty wacky and stuff. Guys, notice that they had three guys in suits of the starters and Litton was up on his two hind legs. What? Yeah, what now? Boopity bop. Here, let's just do like a super basic crop out of this and stuff. After this, I'm just gonna go to sleep is what I'm gonna do, I think. Just gonna do that for a smidge. Whoa. Oh. Okay. Sure, this can be something pretty basic there. This is what it can be. <laughs> Wait, I just I just had an idea. I just had a silly idea for uh for a, de a design with like a thumbnail to do with like these Pokemon that are like trapped in crystals essentially. <laughs> um <laughs> Um What if uh <laughs> What if we like Like What would be a good thing to do for this huh Like would it just be like this shot Or what What would we do here <laughs> Perfect <laughs> That works too What if we um should it just be this? Like, hold on. If I just, like, copy image. <laughs> and we, like... Hold on. Whoa, 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 whoa. Wait a second. I... <laughs> I'm just curious. Could I do something like, um... Give me this, uh... Give me this freaking Sprigorito. Or whatever the heck it is. <laughs> what if... Yeah, now it's quite literally becoming more literal there. And then I just like, you know, get this to blend in here a little bit. Like I can reduce the opacity a smidge. <laughs> this is what I can do. Something like that. I can always apply like a little bit of a, um, let's see here. If I grab like one of these kinds of colors here and then I just, um, <laughs> you know, I add like a little bit of a thing i'll just add this for now it'll look better in a sec trust you me do something like this or something or other and then i don't know reduce the opacity of it and put it into the thing i don't know i don't know if there's a good way to make it look like it's part of the uh part of the thing where bob you know no not like that then not like that i don't think it just looks kind of faded here. If I just like set 100% opacity to that there, and then with the uh, then with the color that I added here, <laughs> there, something like uh, something like this ish. I don't know. And then um, let's see here. Let's see if I just like maybe I'll actually crop this out a little bit. Is what I'll do. Hold on. Hold on. Because we don't need, like, that whole background thing where Bob there. We just need, like, the main thing of Carbonite. Carbonite or whatever the heck it is. I don't know. I haven't watched Star Wars in forever, you know. Not in a long time. I've seen all the uh, movies, like, once. All, like, the main movies, at least, like, once each. And that's probably it in, like, forever ago. Okay, this doesn't need to be perfect. So what the arrow shall point at... A freaking Sprigorito frozen in carbonite. <laughs> and stuff. Here, it doesn't even be perfect. Go to Star Wars both franchise you loved growing up, and now both are just empty shells of each other. Yeah, it... Freaking... The corporatization of, uh... Of many things, kinda. Kinda has a way of doing that, huh? Alright, let's boop it bop. <laughs> Sprigorito frozen in carbonite here. This <laughs> is what we can do. <laughs> oh, man. Alright, yeah. 
I might actually put up my regular stream playlist and just put it on like shuffle. That's what I might do. But yeah, can you up on any lore for this? What, for him being frozen in carbonite? There, I would think so. Let's see here. Let's go to my DVD stream playlist, even though I haven't played DVD in forever. It's still my playlist that I add to like chill tunes and stuff. Let's see here. If I can actually have volume, that'd be cool. Well, freaking. And now it's just going to be infinitely loading. Thanks, YouTube. And now it's still stuck alone. I'm trying to hit unmute and it's hitting like the next button thing where Bob. I just want to listen to a music theme without going to the next thing. Okay, Jeebus. My oh my. But yeah, that was the main story of Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. And Violet, unlike Scarlet and Test Violet. Maybe. We shall see. Let me save here. Oh. I need to save on the uh, thing or Bob here. Yeah, so this has been me organizing for like smash stuff there. So let's see here. Um, so let's make a new thing or Bob. Pokemon presents um, 2022 0803. Boobity bop. And I'll call this like the same thing. Pokemon presents 2022 0803. Thumbnail. <laughs> Boobidabop, just so that I have it saved here. So let's go ahead and refine this. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Maybe we want like a different background then. Maybe I should like group these together, potentially. Hold on, let's see here. So here's our frozen in carbonite sprigarito, whatever the heck. And then uh, go ahead and group these so this becomes like one thing. <laughs> So, there we go. Something like this, I don't know. And I have like a big arrow point towards it. Maybe this, maybe this background is fine. Show off one of the new things in the trailer of like multiplayer. And then, you know, this thing or Bob. Um, <laughs> yeah, maybe something like that. I think I, I think I probably still have, you know, my folder under playthroughs for Pokemon Scarlet and Violet for like my assets for that. Like, my titles and stuff. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I do still have that. So, like, we can slap these around. We might have taken a side chunk off, but, like, whatever. Whatever. We took a bite out of it, just like it feels like has been taken out with a lot of the environments in this game. So, whatever. You know. All right. So, we want, like, a big arrow, right? Because that's what people do in their thumbnails now. Arrow tool. Um. So, we'd want, like just an arrow thing we want like a green thing where bob maybe sure and then we can add like a um outer shadow just to add it like a little bit of depth and stuff something or other <laughs> big arrow time <laughs> that's so silly why do people do this anyway like you put like massive arrows and things and why do people feel like incentivized to click on thumbnails that have like big arrows and stuff? Like it's so silly to me at least. That's the way that I find it personally. But what do I know? <laughs> do we want to do something like this? And then uh, freaking something like uh, Pokemon Scarlet, Pokemon Violet, Pokemon Violence. Um, Let's see here. Oh, heck yeah, it's a Mario Galaxy stuff. <laughs> I don't know. I'm feeling tired. I don't know if I feel like overly ambitious for thumbnail making today because, you know, I'm operating on a few hours of sleep and I'm going to want to like get some get some rest here again. That's what I'm going to want to do. So I don't know if I'm, I feel like doing a high effort one today. I don't know if I'm feeling all that creative. I feel like freaking uh, Spigarito and the Carbonite might be my creativity for the day. <laughs> With a big arrow, you know. Star Wars confirmed. Pokemon Scarred and Pokemon Violence. I don't know what font this is, though. You know? Like, if anyone has an idea what font this is, I'd probably be able to do something like that. But as is, like, I have no idea what font it is. And it's, like, different fonts for each of these. So I genuinely have no, uh, no idea there. Not a clue. But if anyone knows, like, what font it is, we can just randomly bring back, like, a piggy bank of a chunky. You know what? Hold on. Whoa, 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 wait here. You know what we could do? <laughs> you know how in that one thumbnail we did, like, the freaking 
Zan's eye effect, like, of that dragon. Well, if we just, like, subtly do it again. Just for the memes. <laughs> I don't know. He <laughs> won't even be able to notice it when it's like a thumbnail, but it's there. But it's there, you know? <laughs> Just like that one thumbnail that we did that one time. <laughs> It'll be the freaking Zan's Undertale freaking thing will pop with the eye effect. <laughs> Except you won't be able to know unless you like watch this and whatnot. But yeah, we're gonna Star Wars like opening crawl for YouTube comment section. Oh boy. Oh boy there. Well, <laughs> well, will you even be able to notice on the thumbnail that this is like the freaking Star Wars Carbonite thing? <laughs> it's so silly. Oh man. Do we want uh, do we want anything, uh, anything else here? There was a time back when I used to like have PNGs of my face in like wacky ways that I would just like slap onto like characters and thumbnails because it was funny. I don't think I have any PNGs for like the way that I look currently with like a mustache and stuff. But uh, logo font Scarlet Ortem Violet Kafu Techno H. Hmm. Hmm. Let's uh, let's uh, see here. Also, hello, hello, Azur Samurai Ortem font. Let's uh, see here. Um, is it like a free font? Download zip file. Sure. Sure. Oh, please give me no viruses. Alright, there's that. And the other one is a Kafu Techno H font. I guess it would be like, you know, I guess people would know what it is like pretty soon. What with it being Pokemon. Unlike something like freaking Xenoblade where it feels like I gotta search like 3,000 years trying to find like the title font. Yeah, hello, hello, Mythic. You officially missed the thing, haven't you? Yeah, there's a buy license. Can I get it? Pause, download, buy that. Click download to jump to... Oh, boy. This is what often happens when I'm looking for fonts for, like, thumbnails and stuff. Oh, my good gracious. Um, I don't know. Just a random guess? Potentially. iPhones.com. Oh, I don't know about this. Nope. Nope, no way, Jose. Um, how about a different site there? Maybe, maybe. Anything notable in the announcement? No. Pokemon are crystals now. I guess, or something. How freaking, what the heck? Kafu, yeah, this thing or Bob. Download it now. There. There we go. Now let's see here. Let's just see here. So, I can install this uh, Ortum font first. This is what I can do. Boop it bop. It is an interesting font, I must say. Man, I'm freaking popular today. What is going on? I'm getting like all kinds of emails and texts and stuff. My goodness gracious. All right. Oh, yeah. Freaking WinRAR. Does anyone pay for WinRAR? What? There's nothing here. Okay. So, probably not that. So, probably not that, huh? Instead of their temporary power up being a cool new form, just a move for getting swell, they just get crystallized. It's the new gimmick. They just get crystallized and it makes their moves stronger and stuff. Yeah. I guess there's seven zip, I suppose. Um, what the heck? This is download, apparently. Upgrade to membership. Pff, I don't know. How does it progressively get worse reliably? I don't know. Fontendo on Twitter. Gotta link the two things. Okay. Let's see here. But yeah, <laughs> do they now there? Okay, um, apparently this is a page to download the thing, but like, can I translate this page? I have no idea how you do that. Um, how the heck? Oh, there's a thing here. Okay. Neat. 
So, well, my good gracious. Can I not test the thing out? So it's something like this, huh? Interesting. So, where's the thing? Company info, products in use, support. Can I use said font, maybe? I mean... I could technically do it here without having it on my computer, technically speaking. <laughs> and just like crop it out. If we want to be a- If we want to be technical here. So, um, so what were we uh, doing there? Pokemon Scarred and Pokemon Violence? Anyway, Xenoblade Chronicles 3 is making you want to learn the flute. The flute stuff in uh, Xenoblade Chronicles 3 is pretty good there. I mean, I technically don't need the font on my computer if I just do this, right? <laughs> because I can technically, like, you know. Just you ain't get like this essentially. So I mean, I'm gonna have to restart this uh this program to have like the uh, other font be usable and stuff. Is the case. <laughs> there, violence over the spigarito. All right, I gotta restart the thing so it loads the Wartem font. That's what I gotta do. We have Ocarina of Time inspired. Anyone to play the Ocarina? Probably. Probably. All right, let's see here. And then we uh, do a thing where Bob. Wartem, huh? I have a lot of fonts on this computer. Let's just see here. Autumn, huh? And then... <laughs> so, I wonder. <laughs> if we just like... Hold on. 5.8. 5.8. Nah, that. Hmm. 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 Is this like the good lazy way to go about doing this? I don't know. Let's see here. Boobity bop. Color. Yoink. Okay. So. Like this. Give it that outline. And then welcome back, Reggie Bump. Welcome on back. And then let's see here. Let's just see. Give me that basic brush. Ooh, bop. Try to be careful not to erase the Pokemon there. And then this one, I can like actually erase the Pokemon in that one. So I can try applying the textures like that, but. I have a feeling it's probably not going to turn out super well, you know. Potentially not. <laughs> yeah. It is not, I don't think. So let's see here. Let's just see. I'm just gonna do like a basic color thing, Rabob, then is what I'm gonna do. I'm not gonna do like this kind of fancy design. I'm just gonna do something basic. I'm just gonna notice like that fine in like a thumbnail anyway. Is the thing. So I don't need to go like all out or anything like that. I can just, you know, do like a basic, uh, a basic thing, Rabob. Like this and stuff. Whoa. Gosh dang it, I suck at having a steady hand today, I guess. Boopity bop. Ooh, adjust this to there. And then like, something like this-ish. Bam, and then we just do that. Cool, I meant to create a new layer and I didn't apparently. So let's see here. 
gradient poly? I don't know how to do that. I'm sorry to say. I'm just doing something basic. Is all I'm doing. Uh, is all I'm doing here. Something super simple and stuff. Okay, just the making sure here. Boobity bop, and then we can uh, take that out. There, it looks similar enough now, basically. And then, um, let's see here. The thing. Yeah, because I did this weird thing. Was the case. So, this was, no, this was, which one was Violet? This was Violet over here. Was the case. So, negative 4.5, huh? Negative 4.5 on the rotation. This needs to be on top. And needs to be like... Okay, well, it's gonna have to go off to the side then a little bit, I guess. And then... Do I still have that yellow color? Nope. I do not. So, boopity bop. Grab that, and then... Outline. Do a similar thing for Bob here. There we go. Something along those lines. And then... We have, yeah, the Pokemon thing where Bob here. Then let's see here. When Digimon released that game, this is way better than anything from Pokemon the Switch generation, except maybe Rescue Team DX. What with like the, uh, the story thing where Bob that just recently came out alongside Xenoblade 3 there. What would it bop? <laughs> ah, sniffles and stuff. There we go. And then. Let's see here, and then I'll just use this as like a reference thing, where Bob. Did you want to survive as stellar? Glad to hear that you're enjoying it there. And then, let's see here. Let's just see. So then, if I go ahead and say something like this, and put it in there. Put her there. Okay, and then like, I don't know, do this, like that, and then grab like the super light one, and just fill that in like this, and then we're gonna need this on top of that, and this on top of that, there we go, and then I'm gonna want another layer to do like, nope. You know, we gotta match the freaking pattern and stuff. Well, it doesn't have to be like the exact pattern per se, but you know what I mean. Get like some things going and stuff. Something like this. And then I can disable this, nope. Disable this one that I've been using as a reference. <laughs> and then. If I take these thingarbobs that I've been messing with and just give it a little bit of a 3D effect with the outer shadow really quickly. Like, I don't know, 12, 15 or something. I don't know. Something like that. There is one applied to uh, this, right? Yeah, there is. There is. It's just kind of hard to tell on that one. But yeah, um, yeah, something like that. Pokemon Scarred, Pokemon Violence. I don't know. Ugh, sure. You know, I'm not, I'm not feeling too particularly inspired today when I'm like half asleep, you know, is the thing. But we did still make like a silly thumbnail thing where Bob, <laughs> you know, we did do the thing. Technically has been done. We got Spigarito sort of frozen in carbonite. I don't know what the best way to do to make that actually appear frozen in carbonite is. We got the big arrow. The rule that you have to have in a thumbnail is the big obnoxious annoying arrow pointing at things. And then <laughs> and Pokemon Scar, Pokemon Violence. There. I think we have the uh, I think we have the thing. Most likely. Oh. Where's the red circle? 
I feel like if I put a red circle, it would become even less evident that we have Han Solo frozen in carbonite back there because he won't be able to see the hands anymore. So while under other circumstances, we might do a freaking big red circle, I feel like this time it might be better without the big red circle because it'd be even harder to tell what the heck is going on there. It's already kind of hard to tell that this is meant to be Spigarino frozen in carbonite, you know? But yeah, make the image black and white. For what purpose? But why though? What reason does it serve? I don't know. Uh... Oh, well, that's gray. I don't even know how you do that. But I don't know why I would. Why would you? Uh... Oh, you're just, are you just saying like Spigarito? Because I already applied like a. Um... I already applied like a little bit of a gray there from like the carbonite there. Is what I did. But, you know, I still want to make it evident that it's like a crystal thing we're bought with like the glowy kind of stuff there. Is wrong with Violet Legendary's chin? Yeah, it it literally is a tire because they're freaking motorcycles and stuff that you ride around the region is a thing. Well, they're both tires here. This one just runs. This one's a motorcycle. This one just runs despite looking like a motorcycle. But yeah. Yeah, but I figured that. But like I said, I already played like a put a very slight gray to it. But... You know, I still want it to clearly look like the, you know, green crystal thing we're about to show that that's like the thing we're about that's going on here and stuff. But yeah. Um, but yeah. Letting 10 year old ride a motorbike, a loader bike freaking creature thing. Sure. Bam. There, there's the thing. I think I'm going to go past the hail out again. Like, get a few more hours in. And then I'm going to go help out setting up with the uh, Fragapalooza event and whatnot. That's going to be this gaming event going on for like the next four days is the plan um but yeah yeah because it's not enough there i'm tired is the thing i did this like freaking half asleep we had another intermisting time i don't know if i'll be streaming at frag later today i definitely will be tomorrow and stuff hope to see some of y'all nerds there with this wacky digital online event thing bob it'll be interesting to say the least but I'm going to get like a few hours of sleep now for at least. And then I'm going to go help them set up like the venue and cabling and stuff. Is my plan. Does the plan. So, yeah. So, yeah. Thanks all who stopped by and hung out for this set of shenanigans. And until whatever next time is, take care and see you then. Ah, my sniffles. I apologize. <laughs>